Okay, welcome to lesson 9.5. We're going to be talking about kites and trapezoids uh, in this lesson. So far, we've been talking about what, um, parallelograms, rectangle squares, and, and rhombuses. But um, we're, going to talk, we're going to be talking about these kind of interesting shapes, kites and trapezoids. So we have this kite theorem here that has four parts to it. And for the sake of you know, keeping everything organized, I'm going to kind of color code this. Let's do that as one, let's do that as two, let's do green for three, and then blue for four. How about that? Okay, let's talk about that first one. Uh, it's diagonals are perpendicular. So, um, theorem one says if you were to draw a diagonal like this, right here, right from the corners, so you're going to have a perpendicular angle that's created um, so that's very similar to um, the other one of the other theorems from a, uh, when you have a rhombus the diagonals are perpendicular um, let's move on to the second part of this theorem here exactly one pair of opposite angles are congruent so if we were to take a look at the opposite angles right we see this angle R here I'm gonna highlight this this is different from this angle here right but you have this being similar to that so exactly one pair of opposite angles are congruent okay <clears throat> third part of this theorem says that one of the diagonals bisects the pair of non congruent angles okay so if we're taking a look at um, uh, the this angle here Right, one of the diagonals is going to bisect these angles. Right, it's not the case for this one. Right, this one doesn't work. Right, this is going to be different from this. Right, but at least one of the sides or one of the diagonals bisects uh, the angle. And lastly, the fourth part of this theorem says that exactly one diagonal bisects the other so uh, we can tell <coughs> let me see let me erase all this thing. actually it's getting a little cluttered here um, but if we were to take a look at the if we were to take a look at the, the diagonals again okay um, this is the diagonal that's bisected this this oh, this is different right those are different lengths, but exactly one of the diagonals are going to be bisected. So that's what uh, are the four properties of a kite. So hopefully my color coding helped and uh, it explained a little bit about what's going on. Here's a uh, an example problem for using those properties of a kite to solve the problem. There's another one. Let's take a look at all these, all, all the theorem or the parts of the theorem that we covered here. So that first one. If you remember, was that if a quadrilateral is a kite, the diagonals are going to be perpendicular, right? So you're going to make a 90 degree angle, right? The other property was that if you have uh, if you have a kite here, then what was it? Uh, I've already forgotten it. Uh, it's that exactly one pair of opposite angles are congruent. So. Um, this angle is going to be congruent to that, right? Um, but these are not going to be congruent. Okay? <coughs> the other, the third one, uh, was that if a quadrilateral is a kite, then one of the angles, I think it was one of the angles that is going to be bisected, right? Or uh, one of the angles bisects a pair of non-congruent angles. Okay, so uh, this diagonal here, right, right is going to bisect this angle here, right? And I, I think I, I drew the wrong thing in the previous one, but <coughs> uh, this angle right here is not going to be the same as this angle, but actually this whole thing, right, this whole thing is just being bisected, right, along with this whole thing and then lastly if a quadrilateral is a kite 
right? <clears throat> if a quadrilateral is a kite, the fourth one was that exactly one um, of the diagonals is bisected. So this one is going to end up being the bisected one, right? So this is going to be <clears throat> similar to that, whereas this is not going to be congruent to that. Okay, so let's use what we know, or what we learned about kites, in question number two. If in kite, uh, in this kite, um, x, uh, y, x, v, y, x, v is 42 degrees, so this angle right here is 42 degrees, and y, z, v is 30 degrees, find, um, x, y, v, x, y, v, so what we want to know, well, what is this angle, right, what is this, <coughs> Okay, I have a feeling we're gonna. Well, that's it, actually. Huh. We don't actually necessarily even need that angle to solve this if we're just looking for x, y, v. By the way, I think what they meant is they just couldn't get the symbol for this. Is x, y, v measure of y, z? Oops. Well, that's a terrible z. Y, z, v and measure of angle y, x, v. <coughs> so. Um, we don't really need this. This is unnecessary information. What we really want, um, we already have. This This has to be 90 degrees, right? So here's what we need to do. We know this is 42. 42 plus 90 plus x is going to equal 180 degrees since the interior angles of a triangle, which is this triangle right here that we're looking at. Add up to 180 degrees, so what is this? 132 plus x equals 180. Subtract 132 from both sides. x equals 148. Or no, not even 148, sorry. My math is all wrong. 48 degrees, <coughs> so we know uh, this has to be 48. Okay, let's take a look at the explain two section, proving that the base of isosceles trapezoids are congruent. So, uh, what is, first of all, let's talk about what is um, an isosceles trapezoid. Well, uh, an isosceles trapezoid is different from a regular trapezoid in that uh, you have a base with two congruent angles. Right? Or actually, two pairs of congruent angles. Now that I'm looking at this, this is going to be congruent as well. And these. Um, these are going to be congruent side lengths, okay? So, let's take a look at some of the properties here. <coughs> so, three isosceles trapezoid theorems. Uh, the first is that uh, the pair of base angles are congruent. So, this angle right here and this angle are congruent, okay? Um, for the second one, if the trapezoid is one pair of congruent base angles, um, then the trapezoid is an isosceles. Um, I think that's saying the same thing, isn't it? Yeah, I think it is saying the same thing. Um, it's just saying the inverse of the first one. Okay. Uh, this last one is interesting, though. A trapezoid is an isosceles if and only if its diagonals are congruent. So we have this diagonal here. This diagonal here, and if those are congruent, then we have an isosceles. Okay? So, draw a trapezoid and explain in your own words what a trapezoid is. Okay, it doesn't have to be an isosceles trapezoid, but at least, um, and it's the, the basic definition of a trapez basic trapezoid is that you have one pair, right, of parallel sides. Okay? So it's a quadrilateral with one pair of parallel sides. <coughs> Notice it's different from an isosceles trapezoid. So we just need one pair of parallel sides. They can be different lengths, right? But that's what a trapezoid is. Okay. Uh, let's talk about the three isosceles trapezoid theorems. 
the first one was that if you have um, a parallelogram, let me see, what was it exactly? Uh, the base angles are congruent, okay? Uh, and, oh, I should I should have pointed out, this. those are also base angles, okay? So, oh, that's what's different about these two. Duh. Okay, so the first one was that you have the base angles are congruent, okay? Those base angles are congruent. The second one is that um, at least... If you have one pair of base angles that are congruent, then the whole thing is going to be uh, an isosceles trapezoid. And then lastly, the third uh, one was that the diagonals are going to be congruent. Right? So you're going to have congruent diagonals. Okay? All right, let's use this knowledge in the explain three section here, now that we know that. Okay, given the fact that this is an isosceles trapezoid, we know that these base angles, according to theorem two, are gonna be equal to each other. So two x squared plus 21 is equal to three x squared minus four. Let's subtract two x squared from both sides. When I do that, this goes away. We got 21 is equal to x squared minus four, we're gonna add four to both sides. We end up with 25 equals x squared. Square of both sides, we get x equals five. Okay. All right, question number three. We are told LJ, so from here to here, LJ right, is three y plus six. KM is 22 minus y and those diagonals are equal, so 3y plus 6 is equal to 22 minus y. Uh, let's go ahead and move this over. We're going to add y to both sides. 4y plus 6 equals 22. Subtract 6 from both sides. And then we have what? This goes away. We got 4y equals 16. Divide by the coefficient of 4, we end up with y equals 4. Okay. Okay. Here we are at. Okay. Here we are at explain four. Um, we're going to be talking about the trapezoid mid-segment theorem. Okay. This uh, mid-segment theorem says that if you were to um, add the bases and divide it by two, we can actually get the length of the mid segment here okay so <coughs> given that let's let's try this so here's some example problems by the way so using the mid segment theorem we're going to add these two divided by two and get the length of yz okay so 15 plus 29 divided by 2 15 plus 29 is is what, 44? By 44, divided by 2, this is um, 22, is the measure of y, z, right? Easy peasy. Okay, here's question number two. Uh, we want to know what this is. And we want to know what fg is. Well, uh, we're going to call this x, right? x plus this base, 22.4, divided by 2, is going to give us the mid segment. So they've told us the mid segment. We're just working backwards now. Okay. Let's multiply both sides by two just to get that two out of the denominator. 0.4. And this equals what? 19.7 times two gets us to 39.4. Let's subtract 22.4 from both sides. We get x equals what is that? 17. Uh, oh, and we're done. FG equals 17. Okay. Alright. Uh, let's see. RS is one quarter the length of PQ. Find XY and RS. Okay. Well, that's easy. We already know what PQ is. So let's, let's divide it by 4. 
16.8 divided by 4. That gets us to what? 4.2. So this is what RS is. Okay. And then let's find out what XY is. 4.2. So we're going to add um, the two bases. 16.8 plus 4.2. And then we're going to divide by 2 to find out what uh, XY is. So if we add those, what do we get? 21. 21 over 2 equals xy so we get what two right equals xy 